All right, so this is the phone that I've been looking forward to the most this year. I've wanted to see this thing for the past two years. Like it was 2018 when Samsung announced that they were working on some under display camera technology that would come out in the future and we finally have a phone that does it. This is the world's first under display front facing camera system and it's, it's something else. So there's no notch, there's no hole punch, there's no teardrop, there's nothing, it's just screen but there's still a front facing camera there you just can't really see it until it's camera time so this is well right now you can't see anything right at least not to the naked eye and when it's camera mode the camera still works it's like a front facing camera but you can't see it there's a lot to talk about all right this tech is really new but the first company to bring it out is zte with their 450 dollars axon 20. now this phone is not a flagship priced phone. It's also not a flagship equipped phone. It's configured with kind of mid-range specs with mid-range components, but it has this incredibly cool, somewhat invisible front-facing camera. So I'm going to focus this video mostly on this particular feature of this phone. So I guess the big question is, how is it? I found this bug that kind of highlights how it's working, where the camera was still functioning through the active screen, and you can kind of see the RGB array on the camera image. The thing is though, that screen is supposed to be off when the camera is functioning. And once the pixels are off, the camera is visible. When the screen is on, however, there's still some visual artifacts that are noticeable if you look for it. And they're more noticeable in certain conditions than others, but if you're looking for it, you will spot them. It's checkerboarding. It's as if some of the pixels in that area are just permanently turned off. So when you bring up a image up to that area, you'll just see this low resolution pixelated version of like an icon or whatever you bring up in there. But it's most noticeable when you have a bright image, like something that depends on all the pixels to be lit. If you have like a dark anything up there, it's not as noticeable. It's actually quite hard to see in really dark scenes. But if you have something bright, you'll notice it if you tilt the screen. As for how much of an inconvenience this artifacting really is, I think it depends entirely on the person. Personally, like I notice it, but I don't care, like not enough to be like, this technology sucks. I think it's super cool. Obviously this is the first iteration of a consumer purchasable version of this. It can only get better. And the thing is, if you think about like the pursuit that the smartphone industry has had for the past, I don't know, four years, it's always been like shrinking bezels to notches, to teardrops, to hole punches. It was all in pursuit of this. Like this was what they were after, a full screen display. So it's kind of here, it's just imperfect. So when it's camera time and you launch that front facing camera, there's a bit of an outline. It's kind of strange that it's a teardrop shape, but it launches the camera and now you can actually see the lens and the cutout for the front facing camera system. The image quality is decent. I mean, it's clearly shooting through more stuff than a regular front facing camera, but if I had to describe it, it's fuzzier than a regular selfie cam. Now I'm someone who doesn't care too much about image quality on that camera. Like I feel like, I mean, I never take selfies. I use it for video pretty frequently, but when it comes to video stuff, I could go with way worse than this and still be perfectly content, but I get it. There's a lot of people that do care about selfie image quality. So right now it's a trade-off. Clearly you're just sacrificing image quality for, I guess, aesthetics, but this is probably going to change in the future. And I think this is just going to get better quite rapidly. Now this one, the one that's in this camera already is capable of unlocking the phone with facial recognition, right? I didn't think it would be able to like on a first generation phone like this, I thought the camera would just be sucky that it couldn't even do that, but it does it and it's quick. I do think though that the video quality is closer to the standard. It's again, not the best out there, but look at it. It's not bad. We got some bright six in the background, decent dynamic range. We have respectable audio quality. It does only shoot in 1080p 60. So if you're someone that loves to shoot 4k front facing video, that might be an issue, but otherwise, I'm content. So I think this tech is really cool. And at 450 bucks, it's not like you're paying a massive surcharge just for that technology, right? It's not like, it really feels like you're paying 50, maybe $80 extra just for this like little under display camera tech. It's cool. It's clearly not worth it to everybody. This is like an early adoption fee. Let's call it that. 
However, there's a couple things I think you should be aware of. Number one, I do think that because this is the first iteration, the first generation of this stuff, I think we're gonna see other players bring something like this, but improved soon. Secondly, I don't love the audio quality that comes from the earpiece area. There's no visible earpiece, like there's no apertures or cutouts for the earpiece. It's underneath the display as well. But because it's underneath the screen, there is a bit of a muting or muffling of the sound. It's not significant, but it is noticeable. So if you're someone who depends on their phone for making phone calls, and that's lots of people, I'm not one of them. I rarely make phone calls anymore. But if you're someone that does that, then I'd skip on this particular phone. Uh, here's the thing though. I think this is the future. I think that going forward several years, this is what we're gonna see on basically every smartphone out there, a under display front facing camera, just because this is seemingly the goal that every Android manufacturer has been chasing for the past few years. The benefits are mostly aesthetic with the possibility that you can have better eye contact with the people you're video calling if the camera's kind of in the middle of the screen, but there's also security issues that come up when you have this kind of technology. Now my personal phone is a OnePlus 8 Pro, a phone with a hole punch front facing camera. Now if I had the option of swapping out that hole punch for this, I would do it in a heartbeat. I would just eat the reduction in image quality, eat the reduction in video quality, and deal with the checkerboarding. I wouldn't care. Now, I'm not everybody. Obviously, they're mo I feel like most people wouldn't. I feel like if I had to take a guess, most people wouldn't swap out their existing tech for this, like this iteration of it. But I'm curious, would you? Let's say it costs money. Let's say for $50, you could get this. An extra 50 bucks on your phone, you could get this technology instead of whatever exists on your phone. Would you do it? Let me know. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it. Subs if you loved it. I'll see you guys next time.